Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Boini Preeti. I'm doing my radiology residency from Bhagwan Mahavir Jain Hospital. My topic for presentation is chromatic spectrum of MRI CT imaging findings in rhino orbitocerebral mucor mycosis in post-COVID-19 patients. Co-authors are Dr. Praveen Kumar and Dr. Gnana Prakash. Mucor mycosis is a severe opportunistic fungal infection that results from a fungus of order mucorils during second wave of COVID-19, significantly increased number of rhino orbitocerebral mucor mycosis were encountered. Because of its rapid spread and angioinvasion, it has varied presentation among patients. Cross-sectional imaging has an important role in diagnosing cases of ROCM and also helps in assessing the spread of infection, staging of disease, prognostication, and follow-up. With different uh, clinical presentation, we reported various imaging findings from 37 patients with COVID-19 infection and invasive ROCM from our hospital. Risk factors, uh, immunosuppression, cort uh, corticosteroid administration, and uncontrolled diabetes. Pathogenesis, COVID-19 is a procoagible state, and there is incidence of uh, thrombotic events. This procoagible state forms ground for angioinvasion, leading to vessel thrombosis and dissemination of infection. Pathway of spread of ROCM uh, can be direct spread or through pterygopalatine fossa or through sphenoid sinus, from maxillary sinus into the adjacent soft tissue, or from the ethmoid sinus into the orbit, uh, orbital effects and into the cavernous sinus. We have categorized our patients based on the following classification. Honavir SG proposed four-stage system to determine the anatomical extent and severity of ROCM. Stage 1, disease was limited to nasal mucosa. Stage 2, extended into paranasal sinuses. Stage 3, involving the orbit. And stage 4, involvement of the central nervous system. We have retrospectively reviewed the cases of ROCM with the history of COVID-19 infection in their recent past. Most of the patients presented with facial pain and facial numbness, orbital pain and orbit, periorbital swelling, conjunctival suffusion, diminution of vision to, com uh, to complete ophthalmoplegia, blindness, headache, and stroke-like features. Patients in our study had undergone MRI scanning of paranasal sinuses, orbit, brain, and uh, brain with contrast in 1.5 Tesla GE Optima 360 MR machine. CT imaging were performed using 16 slice GE Optima 540 CT scanner. MRI protocol followed at our hospital was coronal T1 weighted and stir sequences, axial stir sequence, axial diffusion, flare, and gradient sequences of brain, post contrast axial, sagittal, and coronal T1 patch set sequences. Coming to imaging interpretation in our patients, coronal and axial stir sequences showed polypodin mucosal thickening of the right maxillary sinus and there was involvement of the right turbinate. Post contrast showed peripheral enhancement with a central non-enhancing area with a perisinus fat strand. Another patient showed uh, polypodial mucosal thickening involving the right maxillary sinus and there was involvement of the right cheek showing edematous changes. And on post contrast, there was non-enhancement of the mucosa of the right maxillary sinus with a perisinus fat strand. This patient showed uh, imaging findings of polypodial mucosal thickening involving the bilateral maxillary sinus. And on post-op, there was peripheral enhancement with a central non-enhancing area. And on corresponding CT image showed uh, bony erosions of the maxillary sinus, walls of the maxillary sinus involving the posterior wall, medial wall, and the adjacent nasal veins. Uh, this was a post-op patient on the left side with a recurrence, on, uh, recurrence of infection on the right side, uh, showing uh, polypodin mucosal thickening in the right maxillary sinus, and the disease was seen extending into the bilateral ethmoid sinus. On post uh, contrast, there was peripheral enhancement with a central non-enhancing area. This was also a post-op case. Uh, post-op patient came with recurrence of infection on the right side. So on imaging, there was polypodial mucosal thickening of the right maxillary sinus. Post uh, contrast, there was evidence of involvement of the extraconal compartment of the inferior wall of the orbit and inferior rectus muscle. A corresponding CT uh, axial section of the CT image showed the areas of bony erosion involving the walls of the maxillary sinus. Uh, this patient showed involvement of all the sinuses, and there was uh, fat stranding noted in the retroorbital region of the left uh, retroorbital region of left uh, orbit. And on post contrast, there was heterogeneous enhancement seen on the left orbit.
this was also a stage three where orbital involvement was seen. Uh, this patient uh, showed involvement of all the sinuses and left maxillary sinus showed areas of necrosis and areas of non-enhancement seen in the mucosa of the left maxillary sinus. And um, there was area of necrosis noted in the medial wall of the orbit, uh, medial wall of the orbit. Areas of bony erosion noted involving the orbital walls and facial bones involving the frontal zygomatic ribriform. Coming to stage four, intracranial extension. This was a post-op patient presented with a, a post-op patient now presented with recurrence of symptoms involving involvement of uh, residual sinuses. And now the disease was seen extending into the basifrontal region bilaterally. On post contrast, there was a peripheral enhancement of the lesion and similar lesion was also seen in the right ganglio-capsular region. This patient had undergone stereotactic brain biopsy and abscess drainage was done, which showed the fungal elements. And uh, following the procedure, there was resolution of the lesion. And this was the first patient encountered at a hospital with a mucor mycosis, now presented with left-sided symptoms. Uh, uh, now, uh, on imaging, there was uh, extensive debulking done on the left side, and uh, DWI showed peripheral restriction, uh, peripheral diffusion restriction, and on post uh, contrast, there was peripheral enhancement, indicating left temporal lobe abscess. This was also uh, this patient uh, was also a post op case came with recurrence of uh, infection recurrence of infection involving the sphenoid sinus and the disease was seen extending into the cavernous sinus. Uh, there was a non visualization of uh, cavernous segment of the right internal carotid artery indicating internal carotid artery thrombosis. The same patient had also involvement of the skull base uh, showing. Uh, uh, areas of bony erosions involving the clivus part, foramen of uh, skull base, and uh, most like uh, mostly involving the right uh, middle cranial fossa. This was also a post-op case came with recurrence of uh, recurrence in the sphenoid sinus, and disease was also seen extending in, uh, involving the roof of the right orbit and uh, adjacent uh, in temporal and infratemporal fossa. And disease was also seen involving the meninges. There was meningeal thickening, and there was an abscess in the right temporal fossa, uh, right temporal lobe. On uh, CT, there was uh, uh, there was involvement of the frontal uh, frontal bone and uh, sphenoid sinus. Uh, this was also uh, uh, showing intracranial extension. This patient presented with uh, stroke-like symptoms. Uh, she presented with a weakness uh, on the right side. On T2, uh, T2 image, there was hyperintense lesion seen in the uh, left thalamic area, which showed blooming on GRE and peripheral diffusion restriction on DWI. Uh, mild peripheral enhancement was noted in the uh, uh, post-contrast images. Uh, she had undergone uh, uh, stereotactic brain biopsy, which turned out to be an abscess, and uh, that abscess was drained, and specimen showed the elements of uh, fungal hyphae. Following uh, post-procedure showed the resolution of the lesion. And uh, another patient showed involvement of the skull base where the clivus was involved. And uh, most of the skull base, uh, in, including the middle cranial fossa, was involved. Post contrast, there was heterogeneous enhancement of the clivus region. This patient show, uh, showed evidence of pan sinus involvement, and there was involvement of the right orbit with the uh, mild proptosis, and right cheek was also involved. And uh, there was an area of infarct noted in the right middle cerebral artery territory with a mild midline shift noted. On microscopy, uh, KOH mountain HNE staining showed broad aseptic fungal hyphae. Uh, uh, broad aseptic fungal hyphae uh, that is uh, a mucor mycosis. Now, sinonasal involvement, maxillary sinus was involved in 32 patients, ethamoid sinus 19, frontal sinus 13, sphenoid sinus 8 patients were, uh, eight patients showed the involvement of sphenoid sinus. Orbital involvement, orbital wall involvement was seen in 13 patients, extraconal, intraconal compartment was seen in 8 patients, proptosis was seen in 9 patients, roof and floor of the maxilla was seen in 8 patients, alveolar process of the maxilla was seen in 8 patients, zygomatic bone involved in 5 patients, clivus was involved in 3 patients.
meningeal thickening by uh, bilateral frontotemporal uh, area was involved in four patients bilateral frontotemporal sylvian fissure was involved in two patients thalamic lesion was involved in two patients and uh, frontal lobe lesion was seen in three patients cavernous sinus involvement was seen in four patients i would like to conclude by saying that most of our patients presented with involvement of the paranasal sinuses extending to orbits and cranial cavity in few cases while evaluating post covid 19 patients high index of suspicion must be made for mucor mycosis and relevant mri protocol should be followed therefore it plays a major role in earlier diagnosis of infection and extent of involvement these are my references thank you